Hi folks, this is Astronomy Live. Back in September of last year, I did an analysis of this time lapse, which was taken on a flight from Zurich, Switzerland to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Taboo Conspiracy claimed that this video contradicted the globe, but I wrote some software to do an accurate prediction of what the globe expects and compared it to the time lapse, finding that it matched perfectly, and that the flight was indeed flying over the curvature of the Earth as expected. Taboo Conspiracy is not so happy about that, though, and he's got help here from Matthew, and together they've released another video calling out MC Tune and myself. Matthew here is very confident that the time lapse he's presenting of a flight from Sao Paulo, Brazil to Lisbon, Portugal contradicts the globe. But before he even released his video, I asked him for some very specific information about the time lapse. I wanted to know the exposure length of each frame in the time lapse and the date and time of the flight. He claimed it was because I was going to say it was fake. I'm not sure why he thought that, but that's certainly not what I was planning on doing. It's certainly not what I did in my previous video on this subject with MC Tune, and I cited that video and asked him if he had watched it. He finally posted his video and he posted a link to the video that he sourced for this time lapse of a flight from Sao Paulo to Lisbon. He said the date was on the video, but he wasn't sure about the flight number, and he didn't know anything about the exposures of the frames. In fact, the date shown on the video that he's citing only provides the month and year, not even the day, let alone the time. Now, Matthew was working with Taboo Conspiracy to analyze this video. Taboo was also the one we were responding to in our previous video on this subject. And Taboo's analysis on this video also doesn't give the information on the exact date and time or the exposure length of each frame. More on that in a minute, but first let's hear why Taboo thinks this video contradicts the globe. If the jet's flight heading southwest was perfectly offset by the globe's alleged rotation, then if the plane turned around and headed the opposite direction to the northeast, then the upward movement of the stars as modeled by Google Earth, would have to double. It's not like the Earth's rotation can switch directions for different flights. By switching the aircraft's heading to the northeast, the flight and the Earth's rotation would no longer be opposing, but would be combining to double the apparent movement of the stars. You can watch it yourself, but facing northeast, the stars should rise up and rotate counterclockwise. And that's exactly what the stars do. Of course, some of the stars rise up in the middle, but the ones on the left actually drop. That means they're rotating. Regardless, there is no indication of a curvature adjustment, especially when you consider the fact that we should be doubling the amount of upward star movement if the canceling out claim were true. For the second segment of the video, we're going to see two sets of islands before the plane lands in Lisbon the Cape Verde Islands, or Cabo Verde, and you can actually see the volcano Pico do Fogo very well, and then you see the Canary Islands. That gives us a time lapse of approximately 2,000 miles confirmed by the islands. Even at 2,000 miles, the upward movement of the stars should be very recognizable. Here is what it looks like on Google Earth. But remember, assuming the canceling out claim of our globe proponents was correct, the time lapse of the stars filmed by the pilot traveling northeast should appear twice the amount shown right here on Google Earth. You can essentially double the amount of movement you're seeing right now, and that is what we should see if we lived on a ball. Now, let's watch the actual 2,000 mile time lapse, and we're going to concentrate on just one star right here that's visible right from the beginning. Again, the stars are going to rotate counterclockwise. Some stars will rise, but this one will actually drop. Astronomy Live cutting in here to say that I want you to take note of how long this time lapse is taking to go from Cabo Verde to the Canary Islands. When you saw his Google Earth time lapse, that was on loop, and it was much faster than this time lapse. But that's not the only very important difference here, and we'll address that in just a minute. For the moment, back to Taboo Conspiracy. And here it is, right before landing in Lisbon, Portugal. Here is the beginning position. Here is the ending position. The same star was visible for over 2,000 miles heading northeast. Comparing that to what we should have seen if we lived on a globe, the truth 
becomes obvious. There is no curvature adjustment by aircraft. This ends the globe. The upward movement of the stars should have occurred, but it did not. As confirmed from several video sources, commercial jets do not drop their noses to account for the curvature of the Earth. Forget my 20-mile laser test proving the Earth is flat. There is no measurable curvature over 4,900 miles. No curvature of the Earth means the Earth is demonstrably flat. Thank you for watching. So remember what I asked before this video was released? I wanted to know the date and time of the flight and the exposure length for each frame so that I could properly compare it to the globe. Matthew did not have that information. It appears that Taboo doesn't have this information either. And of course that begs the question. If Taboo doesn't have that information, how can he compare it to the globe and claim to find a contradiction? In fact, Taboo goes right back to the same old well of using Google Earth in the same wrong way all over again, not accounting for the rotation of the Earth during the time lapse, and not even understanding exactly when this time lapse occurred or the exposure length of each frame in the time lapse. His Google Earth version of the time lapse only takes about 134 frames or about four and a half seconds before it loops. For comparison, the second half of his time lapse covering the span from Cabo Verde to Lisbon takes over 20 seconds. He also demonstrates no understanding of my analysis of his previous video, which he mischaracterizes as claiming that the motion of the plane perfectly cancelled out the apparent rotation of the stars as seen from the plane. That is very clearly not the case, and in fact what I did was compare the globe model to what we see in the video, and I found that it matched perfectly. This kind of in-depth analysis and comparison requires knowing the flight path of the plane, the exact date and time of the flight, and the exposure length, so that the exposures can be matched to the time that they occurred. That is the reason I asked those very specific questions of Matthew before he released this video. And his failure to provide that information, and the failure of Taboo Conspiracy to even know that information, shows that they did not do the kind of in-depth analysis that I have done previously, and which I will be doing on this video. Again, the video only tells us the month and year of the flight. We'll have to try to figure out the exact date and time in order to properly compare it to the globe. It starts out at twilight while in the southern hemisphere, and we can see a number of stars and constellations. Using astrometry, we can positively identify these stars and constellations. Here's an astrometrically solved frame from the beginning of the video as twilight is fading. We can see the Big Dipper in Ursa Major is prominently on display. The front of the Dipper's bowl points towards Polaris, but Polaris is below the horizon. It's not visible in the beginning of the video, because again, the video starts off in the southern hemisphere. As we fly over Brazil, there's a jump cut in the video, and suddenly we're over the Atlantic Ocean and in the Northern Hemisphere, but we don't know exactly where until we see Cabo Verde a couple seconds later. The video continues, and eventually they reach the Canary Islands. A short while after that, the video makes mention of the fact that you can see the International Space Station flying overhead, and this is the clue we need to figure out exactly when this video was recorded. We know that the month was April and the year was 2021, but we don't know the date and we don't know the time. But we can conduct a search to see when ISS was at this position as seen from this location over the ocean. We can use the time it took for them to go from Cabo Verde to the Canary Islands to estimate the approximate location over the ocean when the International Space Station appears a few seconds later. We can also see that they start their descent from cruising altitude just after the ISS pass, so we can look for that in the flight data as well as a sanity check to make sure we're on the right path. While we don't know the exact flight used, we know that it was a direct flight from Sao Paulo, Brazil to Lisbon, Portugal. We also know that we saw it fly directly over Cabo Verde and the Canary Islands with no deviations in between for weather so we can use this flight data as a proxy for the actual flight and estimate the position it was at when the International Space Station was observed. By astrometrically solving a frame containing ISS, we can get its coordinates and feed that into a program I wrote to conduct a search and find when ISS was closest to those coordinates as seen from our estimated position over the ocean in the month of April 2021. 
The result was April 30th. And not only did the result match very closely with the observed position of ISS, it also confirmed the motion of ISS as seen in the video. The two green circles represent the expected positions of ISS 7 seconds apart, and they are 22 pixels apart. By comparison, the streak of ISS in the frame is about 21.26 pixels long, and so we expect that the total exposure length was a little less than 7 seconds. We now have an exact time mark for when this flight was occurring, and we also now know what the exposure length was for each frame. So we can actually compare this to the globe and see what the globe predicts in terms of the motions of the stars. In fact, we have a specific request here from Matthew to analyze the zenith angles of the stars in the video. He claims that they shouldn't rise according to the globe. So we're going to find out what the globe really predicts. In fact, do you remember that particular star that Taboo Conspiracy was pointing out throughout the video? He doesn't know which star that is, but thanks to astrometry, I have its identity. The star is actually Musida at the very tip of Ursa Major. And so, in my analysis, we will look at the expected zenith angle of Musida as the plane flies. In the middle of the frame, very prominently, we can see Polaris, the North Star. And so we would expect that all of these stars would be appearing to rotate counterclockwise in this view. As we watch the time lapse, you will see that, and you will see that Polaris rises in the view over time as the plane heads north, as expected, on the globe. We'll also monitor Alderamin in the constellation Cepheus on the right. This will give us one star east of due north and one star west of due north. The reason that Polaris is prominently featured in the center of the view, even though this plane is heading north-northeast, is because the camera is actually panned a little bit to the left. It is not looking dead ahead the way the camera did in the previous video that I covered in September. This is another reason why my software is so useful in this situation. I will project where the plane's nose is expected to be on the globe given its position from the flight path that we downloaded from FlightAware, and given the time information that we're able to figure out based on the exposure length that we saw in the frame from ISS and the time it took us to go from Cabo Verde to the Canary Islands. Here is the fully annotated video. I analyzed the unbroken portion of the video from Cabo Verde to the Canary Islands and then on to the ISS Pass to where they start the descent from cruising altitude. On the left hand side you can see the date, longitude and latitude, as well as the zenith distance both of Musida and of Alderamin. Musida is labeled with a green circle on the left and Alderamin is labeled with a blue circle on the right. As a reminder, the zenith distance is the angle between the star and the zenith directly above you. It is equal to 90 degrees minus the altitude over the horizon. So the larger the zenith distance, the closer to the horizon. Also on the right hand side is a red circle that represents where the globe predicts the nose of the plane should be. The globe prediction has the nose of the plane just above the horizon throughout the entire time lapse. Again, that marker is placed there based on the coordinates in the image and the globe prediction for the nose of the plane as it flies over the curvature of the Earth. The Flat Earthers are claiming that the stars we see rising from the horizon, like Polaris, are not rising fast enough. And if that were true, we would expect the globe prediction would have the nose of the plane dipping below the horizon, as it expects the plane to dip more than what we're seeing here in this video, based on how Polaris and the other stars close to it are rising. We also see Musida descending towards the horizon as the Earth rotates, and we can see that the globe prediction has the zenith distance increasing for Musida over time, even as the zenith distance for Alderamin continues to decrease to the point that it's not even in the field of view by the end of the time lapse. I want to emphasize that the zenith distance data in the top left corner of the screen is not empirically determined. This is actually the globe prediction based on the position of the plane from the flight path data that we got from FlightAware. And we can see that, that data is accurate because it lines up with when we see both Cabo Verde and the Canary Islands. So when Matthew claims that none of the stars in the field of view should be showing an increasing zenith distance over time, he's simply wrong. The globe accurately predicts an increasing zenith distance for Mesita 
throughout the course of the time lapse, and this is in fact the star that he and Taboo Conspiracy are pointing out in the video. So let me finish by offering a couple predictions of my own in terms of where I see all this going, because this is now the second time that I've addressed this kind of claim. And in both cases, the globe accurately predicts exactly what we see in these time lapses. I may have tipped my hand a little bit by asking Matthew very specific questions about the precise date and time of the flight, as well as the exposure length used throughout the time lapse. He previously claimed my only play was to claim the video was fake, but he can now see that's definitely not what I was going for. But he now understands that the reason I was asking those questions was to perform this kind of in-depth analysis, and that I need that information in order to accurately compare what we see in the time lapse to what the globe predicts. I was lucky in this case that we had a few markers that we were able to use in order to perform the investigation. We had the plane flying over Cabo Verde and the Canary Islands, and importantly, we had the ISS labeled and visible in the video. The visible islands in the video allowed me to determine an approximate position from which ISS was seen, and ISS itself gave us a definitive marker for exactly when this flight occurred and the exposure length used throughout the time lapse. Given that Taboo Conspiracy completely mischaracterized my previous analysis of the previous time lapse that we took a look at, I don't expect him to learn anything from this video, and I certainly don't expect him to accurately describe what I just did. What I do expect is that at some point they'll make the same kind of claim again, only next time they'll try to make sure that they pick a time lapse that doesn't feature the International Space Station or some other prominent well-known satellite that I can use to try to locate exactly when the flight occurred. They'll try to find some time lapse that doesn't have that kind of detailed information associated with it so that they can make the claim without worrying about me being able to do this kind of in-depth analysis. They've already provided two time lapses that I've been able to analyze and show that these planes really are flying over the curvature of the Earth. But if they want to provide a third one, I'll be happy to oblige. The longest part is simply running the astrometry on several thousand video frames. But in terms of doing this analysis, the software is ready to go whenever they are. I don't expect to change their minds or for them to even be honest about the analysis I've done. That's not my objective here. Honestly, I had fun just doing the detective work to figure out exactly when this time lapse occurred, and I was fortunate that ISS made such a prominent appearance that made that possible. This also gave me the opportunity to improve the annotation software, instead of simply annotating my own homebrew planetarium program and reprojecting the results, I was able to directly annotate the time lapse video in this case instead, and I feel like that worked really well this time, because not only did it give us all the information we needed. It also showed that the video really was panned a bit to the left, which had influence on the results as well. A link to the source code is available in the video description. Thanks for watching, and clear skies.